key of this room is supposed to be hidden in the planter. Yes. One of these? Irma maintains these plants herself. I guess it's her hobby. Aha! And here is Irma's key to Gertrude's chambers. Um, is Marcel's gonna find it strange that I'm going inside of Gertrude's chambers? I know I have a key, but like... It'd be a little weird, wouldn't it? Oh well. Ah, okay, yes, they do notice. <laughs> what are you doing here, my lady? Don't know how you got yourself a key, but the Queen's chambers are private. Fuck. Evidently, I must attempt this when he's gone. Yeah, I figured. That makes sense. Quince? The King and Queen and Hamlet are over here now. Quince is a very popular person. I guess let's go there. Polonius is running over this way too? Everybody's here, oh my god. <laughs> Half the castle. Hamlet. Your mother and I demand an audience with you. Since you have not sought us out, we come to find you. Hmm. Love, not so prickly. Calm yourself, please. <sighs> what I intended to say was, we'd like to speak to you about reconciliation. This period of mourning has gone on far too long. <laughs> the young earth lies lazily packed on my father's ribs, and you're ready to settle into his throne. That's how it is, isn't it? Oh, Hamlet. Stop! I am your uncle by blood and father by law. I order you to listen to me without retort. You've no place intimidating the people of this castle. Women especially. It's crude and beneath a young lord of your standing. Men must be strong, stalwart, and noble in this house. To perform otherwise shames the Danish crown. And furthermore, Goodbye. I'm leaving. No. My love. You must be tender with him. <sighs> Why? Because a sniveling brat can't handle the touch of a firm hand? My brother was a fool of a father. And the boy is weak as a result. Ah. Some noble hearts cannot be beaten into obedience, but love them well, and they will love back, ever faithful. My son is such a heart. Ugh. It was a waste to come here, for all of us. Ah, oh, right. Polonius wasn't coming to the grounds to do anything with that event. They're going to the graveyard. Um, the lays are still here? Where are they? You just off down here? Up there? Wait, that's just one lady. Where's the other one? All the icons overlap. I'm not sure if both are listed as being here. The servants draw water from this well to wash our belongings. What you? What got you all in a huff, Cygnus? Uh, Yerman Marcellus in here. They must be playing cards. Hmm. Oh, Queen Gertrude's in their chambers now. I, I shouldn't enter the chambers while Gertrude is in there, right? But also, isn't the murder gonna happen soon? Uh, let's go to the graveyard first. Hmm. This is the forest path. This is where the game first started during the prologue. We were reading a book right here by the shore and Polonius comes to talk with us. I didn't miss the event, right? No, no. 
I guess it's not really an event so much as just uh, I'm just supposed to talk with them. Can I talk about my mother? No. Actually, wait. I can't even talk about Queen Astrid? Am I supposed to just wait a minute more and something will happen? Hmm. I could also just straight up try to tell Polonius, hey, don't go to Gertrude's room. This sounds, but please believe me. Hamlet is going to make an attempt on your life. Hamlet? For what purpose? No. Is it the king's wish? I don't think so. I don't know exactly. I believe Hamlet is the only man you need fear. Does this mean you believe me? And you'll stay away from him? Hmm. Well... You know it makes me ill when you say strange things like this. It's on my mind at the very least. Now please, don't go spreading odd portents of doom to anyone else. So he's believed my warning, at least a little. Perhaps that's enough to keep him alive this time. Polonius now believes that he should be wary of Hamlet. Good. Something. It's my mother's grave, Elise. She died before I can even remember. I know father loved her a lot. The father comes to visit her sometimes. Perhaps I should join him. He might like that. Um. Uh, well, good news, Ophelia. We've joined him. I'm a little bit confused. Am I supposed to do something in particular? I thought they would tell me more about Queen Astrid. And none of these really are anything I want to say right now. These are the royal family graves. The one in the center is Hamlet's father, King Hamlet. Oh. Someday, Hamlet, the queen, and the king will, will all find rest here. I'm just thinking I should wait until this event is over and then speak with Polonius, perhaps? What is Lady Britt doing in the Royal Gallery? It would take me a very long time to get there. Because I'd have to go all the way from here to here to here to here to here to here. Yeah, I think I'll just wait here. Let me fast forward time. Oh, father, no. Father. <laughs> Damn you. Wait, who's that coming over there? Was that Hamlet? Wait. What? Did Polonius turn around? What's going on here? Hmm. I don't understand. I thought I was supposed to talk to you about Queen Astrid after... We visited our mother's grave. I don't get it. Okay. Well. No events happening right now. Queen Gertrude is still in their chamber, so I don't think I can use the key. Hmm. I can't think of anything to do right now. I just kind of want to 
die and start another loop, which I could do. I mean, I could easily fast forward time. I don't know, let's fast forward a little bit of time. Oh. There's an event happening in Polonius's chambers? What? what? What's happening? There's no one else there. Burn. Another one to ashes. Father! What are you doing? What's best for Her Majesty and for Hamlet? With everything that's going on, precautions must be taken. Stop! Wait, what are you burning? <sighs> Sorry, that that's me. That wasn't the dialogue, that was me asking, what are they burning? Ophelia, you couldn't possibly understand what these documents contained. Burning these papers is a blessing to the one who wrote them. Someday I hope you'll understand the everlasting dedication I bear to this royal family. This is the depth of it. No one must know. If you tell his majesty about this, it'll be my head. Acquired the information what my father burned. Polonius no longer believes that there exist some secret strange notes written by King Hamlet. Ooh. This is a new audio track. Polonius now believes that Polonius destroyed some secret documents. So the hearsay just says, My father burned some notes in a secretive way. He may be hiding something. Oh yes. Oh yes they are. Uh, what got added to their bio, by the way? My father is so loyal to the king that he's still keeping secrets on the king's behalf after King Hamlet's death. I worry it's going to bring father nothing but trouble in the long term. Father? I know you were burning some secretive documents in your room. Can you explain why? <sighs> I expected never to speak of them again. And now I won't. Those horrid notes are gone forever. And good riddance. Love, please don't tell anyone about what you saw. Please. It could mean my head. Ah, you're not going to tell me anymore. Hmm. I wonder if I can get the documents next time before they burn them. Where are they held? In their chest? I wonder if it would increase Polonius's chance of surviving if I tell them Bernardo has summoned you. That's if I think that Polonius is suspicious. But even if I don't think they're suspicious, which I don't, I'm, I'm sure Polonius isn't the one that murders us. I'm sure they're not the hooded figure. But if I do that, then that means Polonius won't be in Gertrude's chambers getting killed by Hamlet, right? So maybe. Father. Bernardo would like to meet with you privately. Could you report to him, please? Oh, of course, at once. I must wonder why he didn't come to me himself. Oh, bother it. Never mind. Polonius now believes that Bernardo wishes to meet. Good. Good, good. So, when are these events happening? Seven in the morning, Bernardo questions father. Ten in the morning, father... And the king planned to catch Hamlet. A group gathers to play cards. Oh, that's that far in the future? Huh, Saturday. It's my father's lockbox. Keeps his personal items in there. Nothing but the key can open it, I presume. Yeah, so the secret notes I assume would be in there. Where would I find the key? I've already looked around their place, so I'd have to find it some special way. I don't know. Maybe I'd have to be here while Polonius is, like, first coming here to burn the notes. 
Lady Brit, what do you... Lady Brit is so mysterious. I just see them having their own personal events all over the place. What are you doing? I'm probably not going to make it in time, but let's go. I'm a bit suspicious that Lady Brit might be the hooded figure. Okay, it's still happening. We might make it. <gasps> Who? Ophelia. <laughs> oh, Ophelia. <laughs> you gave me a fright. Brit? What brings you down here? I like to leave the castle when I can. I call it a break of sorts. As you well know, Gertrude seems to frown on courtly women going to town too often. So I come here instead. Hmm, sure. Or you pass off your information that you've gathered as a spy. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I know all about that. Hmm. What of you? It's three in the morning. Oughtn't you to be in bed? Or are you planning to sneak into Hamlet's? Never mind, I don't particularly care. Good night. Yes, very odd. Very odd. What is this shack? Such a small location. Locked, isn't it? It's older than I am, but not by much. It doesn't say it's locked, but like when I click on it, it sounds like it is. Out to sea, sure. That way lies eastward, out into the sound. Denmark controls the waterway here. All passing ships must stop and pay their tolls to us. The royal fleet of Denmark is anchored close by. This harbor is rather shallow, so longboats come ashore to ferry passengers to and fro. Whoops, I just clicked out of the game. What now? Pastime? Let's head to the courtyard so we're in a more central position. go to the landing? Like, if Hamlet is going to go there and shoot my father, then maybe I can catch them right at the door before they go in? I don't know. What's on the old timeline? In about an hour, Bernardo questions father. Let's just pass some time. Whoa. God, that passes time so freaking fast. I wouldn't be able to even figure out if Hamlet is going past me. They would just be a blur. Oh, hey, wait a minute. I just realized nobody's in Gertrude's chambers. I can use my key. And now it isn't. Key meet keyhole. Hell yes. Oh, this place is pretty. Gertrude's diary. This is going to have good information. May 2nd MDXXXV, as they used to read it in the old days. <laughs> I don't actually know what the M and D mean. V is 5, X's are 10. I think M might be like 100 or something. I don't know what D is. May 2nd. Tonight my husband seemed distressed. At first I thought he was missing our son, gone to Wittenberg. But as the night progressed, he seemed to grow old before my eyes. He seemed broken, somehow. When the second course was served, he collapsed while raising a toast. Ironically, a toast to our health. I took him on my shoulders and bore him out of the great hall and up to his bedroom myself. As I lay him down in his bed, I noticed tears in his eyes. I tried to comfort him by kissing his forehead, 
but he pushed me away. You will betray me, he rasped. You will always betray me. Every time. You cannot do otherwise. He collapsed into something like sleep then and would not answer my questions. When I returned to the party, our guests were concerned, but Claudia stepped in to assure them. Everything's all right, he boomed in his loudest, most regal voice. Everyone, drink more. Don't take your health for granted. Then he turned and offered me his hand. Now, I think a dance with the queen will restore some life to this party, don't you? He said, smiling at me. It was as though I were the only woman in the whole world. In all my time married to Hamlet, he never once looked at me like that. That evening, when all the guests had gone to bed, I found myself outside my bedroom door, saying my goodnights to Claudius. I don't want to go to bed, I told him laughing. I want the night to continue. Stop the dawn. As you wish, my queen, he said, and kissed me. I was surprised at first, and yet I wasn't. I kissed him back. He pulled my bedroom door shut behind him. Surely I, too, deserve some happiness in this world that has been so cruel to me, don't I? This is a very interesting, broken... Husband seemed distressed. So even before old King Hamlet was murdered, things were something was wrong even before then. They were distressed, they collapsed. And also this part is really interesting. You will betray me, he rasped. You will always betray me every time. You cannot do otherwise. It almost sounds as if they they also were experiencing these time loops like Ophelia is. You will always betray me every time you cannot do otherwise. Oh no, Gertrude. This, this information could really tear apart the court. It sure could. Who would I tell this to, though? And, like, why? What exactly would this accomplish? Acquired the information the affair. Now believes that Queen Gertrude is unfaithful. Learns more about Claudius coming undone. Learns more about... The spirit? What's the spirit? Is that... What is that? Is that already hearsay or is that a lead? Oh, yeah, it's under leads. I've obtained proof that Gertrude and Claudius's affair started before King Hamlet's death. If I let Hamlet know what I found, I'm certain he'll do something rash. But if that's what it takes to understand what's happening, perhaps it's wiser for me to follow this to its conclusion, no matter what. Okay, yeah, good point. And now Horatio and Quince. Quince is very popular. Let's explore the rest, rest of the room. Oh, I think this, the screen here, I think that's probably uh, what Polonius was hiding behind. Or possibly will hide behind. And then get killed by Hamlet. The queen has a private hearth to toast her feet at night, of course. It vents through the center of the castle tower. Oh. Okay, I think we're fine. King Claudius is just walking by. The door's open, and I'm the only one inside of their wife's room, but they didn't seem to look inside. <laughs> Very preoccupied with thoughts of murdering their brother. Okay, the rest of Gertrude's room. The hearth, the bed. If I want to take a nap, it should be in my own room. Yes. Mirror. This is where the queen has her hair done. A mirror of this size must have taken a long while to build. Oh, Peculiar Tales, Volume 5. It's a book of poetry. Walking the low beyond. Hear me, young maidens who have traveled wild, whose eyes have never seen the touch of death, who tarry often when the sun grows dim, who linger long by cairns and caverns dark. 
I once was you in spirit and in heart. I am Persephone, the taken one. When I was young, I planted seeds alone and gathered flowers freely in the sun. One day the earth burst forth with violent seams and ashes belched with spite upon the land. King Hades, Lord of Death, had come for me to seize and make me his unwilling bride. At first I cried out to the world above, but no one heard the call to grab my hand. He pulled me down into the low beyond, and I knew this was where I'd make my grave. No flowers grew within the world of death. I fell upon the ground and wept with fear. As Hades offered me his outstretched hand, I flinched from him and clenched my trembling fists. He bade me then to take his hand's contents, a small red fruit with tiny ruby seeds. The god of many names, his countenance kind, pressed each small icy seed into my palm. Persephone, I'll never do you harm. For years I've loved and watched you from afar. Become my wife, and you shall be the queen of everything that lives and moves about. But if you wish to flee from me right now, I'll trouble you no more and leave you be. I brought you down here not to be your jailer, but to show you the lands you might yet rule. Three days and nights I spent in Hades' world. I grew to know his kingdom as my own. When that third night fell on the river Styx, I knew that I had made my final choice. I shall take these three seeds and be your bride, if only you will grant me one small thing. I wish to plant these seeds in darkness here, and turn your endless winter into spring. So maidens, when you find you are now crones, and when your kindest days all seem long past, when winter sinks into your tired bones, prepare yourself to meet me then at last. I'll guide you down the long unending halls, and bear you gently to the low beyond, where you will dine beside the ones you've lost, and join us in an everlasting bond. Persephone a girl taken from her homeland and made a queen. Sounds familiar. Okay, I think I should get the hell out of here. What would happen if I just stayed in there until somebody came back? Either Marcellus or Queen Gertrude. I feel like something really, really bad could happen. Quinn, Gertrude, and Horatio are now in the grounds. And Bernardo and Polonius. Ah, right, they're having their interrogation. Although I think Bernardo said they're going to make it not look like an interrogation so that Polonius isn't going to freak out or anything like that. They'll probably just think, that was a weird conversation I just had with Bernardo. Why do they want to see me so bad? Shall I tell Hamlet, then, about the evidence that I have against King Claudius? Yes. Yes, I shall. Oh, Hamlet. I have reason to believe your mother had an affair with your uncle before your father's death. I came across a diary of hers. She wrote about it extensively. What? No. Huh. Frailty, thy name is woman. My father would have done anything for my mother. Claudius was a satyr next to his Hyperion Ophelia. I have no idea what those words mean, but I assume that's a really good reference in comparison. My father desired such a gentle world for her that he would have kept the winds of heaven from visiting her face too roughly. I just want to pause for a second. King Hamlet is making it sound like their their father, their actual father, was the best husband to ever exist. And I don't know, that could be true. I don't really know anything about him, or I don't know very much about them anyway. But remember that Gertrude's diary mentioned, like, don't I deserve some happiness in the world? It sounded like they were miserable. Now, whether that's because of their husband or something else, I don't know. Probably because of their husband. But yeah, I don't. I can't, Hamlet definitely doesn't have the full picture. Before the slipper she wore to his funeral had even been broken in, 
a funeral where she followed his body like Niobe, all tears. She was already marrying him, my uncle. Such dexterity to incestuous sheets. Nothing about this is good. She should suffer for what she's done. Hamlet. Be reasonable. No. Ophelia, do you believe in spirits? What? Listen, when I ran into your bedchamber earlier, I wasn't mad, I swear it. I saw my father's spirit on the castle walls. It spoke to me. Your father's ghost? I saw the spirit in a dream, too, I think. My father's spirit claimed he had been murdered. He told me that my mother was unfaithful to him when he still lived. And if we now know that's true, it must be true as well that my uncle killed my father and covered up his crime. I was planning to just kill him, but knowing that both of them are equally complicit. <laughs> I have something special in mind for the both of them now. Please. Think carefully. No! The time for that has passed. Now I want only revenge for my father. On her and him. Today I'll make my move when everyone is next gathered. You must be there, Ophelia. You must bear witness to all this. Then I'll take you to meet Father's spirit, and you'll understand why it had to be this way. This won't end well. Hamlet shatters and will not recover. Quite the information, a ghost in Elsinore. Hamlet now wants to destroy King Claudius. Hamlet now wants to destroy Queen Gertrude. Hamlet now believes that Queen Gertrude was unfaithful. Now believes that Ophelia believes that there are rumors of a ghost. Well, there's a lot here. <laughs> Ophelia now believes that there are rumors of a ghost. Hamlet now believes that King Hamlet was murdered. Ophelia learns about a future event in which Hamlet unveils the truth before the court. Whoops. Accidentally skipped out of that last one. So when exactly is that going to happen? Uh... Is it here? Whoop. Yes. So, a bit later in the day. Quite a bit later. About ten hours later. Okay, well, I think this is a pretty good place to end the episode. So I hope you've enjoyed so far, and when I return, we're going to see what we can do as we bide our time waiting for the disaster that Hamlet is going to enact upon everybody. <laughs>